Good day, YouTubers. Yes, it's me again. And that can mean only one thing. It's time for some more Land Rover Discovery TD5 repair. Woohoo! And today, I'm going to be hopefully fixing my wobbly knob. This old gear change. There's spring pressure there but it feels like the spring's not actually acting in, on anything. And I believe it may, and I, I may be wrong, but I won't know, know until I've taken it apart, but I believe it may be one of these little critters. And this is a gear change, sort of spring plate, guide plate. There's no real sort of name for it, it's a gear plate. And uh, there's two springs either side and they sort of sit against this, the old gear stick, is up through there. And when you move the gear stick about, the two springs sort of spring. So that is the job I'll be doing today. So to do that, I need to remove this center console, which I will start by removing the gear sticks. To remove those, it's reasonably straightforward. You have to unclip the plastic sort of around around the base there that holds the gator in place and then turn the whole lot around to unscrew it like so Quite a long thread on these things. Quite long indeed. There we go. There's yeah, quite a surprisingly heavy thing that. That's solid. I don't know what, but that's a lot heavier than one that I took out of a an old discovery I had from years ago. So I'm not sure what that's made of, but that's very heavy that. So I shall put that down there safely out of the way. Same with the high low transfer stick being careful when you do it to uh, not get it caught anywhere because you could quite easily twist the, the genuine sumptuous leatherette off the gear knob Sort of get the impression that they don't want these things to come off in a hurry. And that's that one off. That's quite solid and weighty as well, actually. Right. And that can go down there. And then she'll remove the mat. So with the mat removed, now it's a case of removing this fascia off the switches, and I'll do it very carefully. Just getting a screwdriver in there and just very carefully prising it away all there is is just these very thin prongs holding the thing in place you've got to be very careful you don't break those off and then you get your Phillips head screwdriver and you remove should be four screws but there's only three on this one these screws by here Tiny little things, put them somewhere safe. Don't want to lose them, I shall put them up on the uh, dashboard there. On the little mat. Oh, I think despite um, the old mishap with the window and the dent in the bodywork, I still feel so I'm actually getting somewhere. Right. And then there we have, very carefully stretch out some of the wires. And there we have the various switches and the central, the uh, rear switch disabling button for the rear windows. So I shall now take these out um, and make a note of which is which. It's basically white, for the front 
purple for the back and then a single brown one by there. Of course, getting each side right. So I'll make a note of these, take a photo, and then I'll unclip this. So I'll photograph that and just gently pull all these plugs out. It sort of helps as well that um, these wires, they sit actually in there on the right and on the left. But we'll be removing the centre console so chances of them staying like that are unknown. Right. So with that out of the way, we then have to sort of slightly release the handbrake and it's, very, it's a bendy sort of wire like so like that. Before you release the handbrake of course make sure your car is level or if it's on gravel it's not going to move really. So before you do anything let your handbrake off make sure the car can't move. So I've unclipped that. See it's like a couple of uh, a couple of coat hangers at either side like so. So now we need to disconnect the uh, handbrake cable which will be right by there because once that's off, we can pull the handle right up so it's vertical. So with my two 13 mil spanners, access is a little bit limited, but um, put one on the bolt on the other side. And we undo those. There'll have to be a case of, to get the nut off, I think. A little bit of lifting of the handle maybe, up and down and so on. Like that. It's a little bit of a fiddle. I think I'll just screw it back on slightly. Maybe. Oh, just unscrew the bolt a bit, that's probably easy. There we go. So, one 13mm nut followed by the bolt, which screws out like so. And the handbrake is now disconnected from the cable right by there. Not surprisingly, though, with this car, there's only one screw at the front. So that means somebody has had the centre console out at some point, which sort of makes you question whether someone has already had this off in order to investigate the gear stick problem. Hmm. Only problem I'm noticing now is that with everything removed, this doesn't seem that bad, but it's still difficult. Spring-wise, it seems very good, but guide-wise, you know, and accuracy-wise, it doesn't it doesn't feel so accurate. Still, I'm nearly there, so we'll get the thing off and I can have a good look at it then, can't I? So I now need to remove uh, two screws inside the central cubby box. Uh, but before I do that, I need to take out whatever's in there. Keys for the trailer. It's amazing what you find when you the things you keep in your cubby box, wallet, phone charger, yeah, the complete memoirs of Donald Sinden. Give me a knighthood. 
What else have we got in here? Okay. Oh. Wow. Oh. There's a, a log splitter. So, I thought that was it, but something else stuck down here. Oh. Hey, oh, I was wondering where that was. It's my guitar. I've been looking for that. Wow. And here, with all that stuff out, I can see the screws, which are going to be not as tight as I thought. Let's see if I can get that in there, looking through the camera. Three. Right, I'll get these out, and then it'll be ready for the next bit. With those two screws out, close the lid back up, and uh, now ready to remove the centre console. It's a sort of case of wiggling and stuff, and not forgetting, we can only get so far, and then we have to disconnect the wiring for the cigarette lighter, which is underneath there. And then it comes and there's another little red one. Oh. I'm assuming that's the power. Or the lighter and one for the for the light itself. And the console is away. And the console's out. And then we have this thick bit of highly advanced foam rubber sound deadening. <laughs> yes. And we're greeted by some rivets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rivets. Which I've now got to drill out. Now I'll start by using the battery drill with a five millimeter drill bit in it. And I'll remove these rivets first to see how access is because when I did a similar job with a Discovery 1 there wasn't this extra little hatch it was just the rivets around the edge so I'll see how the access is just by taking this out I mean this may have been added by Land Rover for such eventualities just for access to this area so we'll get drilling here first plate off watching the metal swarf and I'll go getting that on the seats so it sticks everywhere and the rubber gasket which is nicely stuck in place and take that off and there we go Well, things wouldn't be that simple. It looks like I need to take the entire, all these rivets out and remove this entire panel right by here. So I've pulled the heater duct pipe for the rear heater away and to the side. No need this to do it this side because all the rivets are there. And I shall drill these rivets out. And with all the rivets out, and before I do anything else, I'm going to have a quick 
vacuum always swarf. And with all that removed, I now need to undo the bolts holding the uh, high-low ratio box uh, to that cover. They're only 8mm bolts, so they're not done up really tight or anything like that. Obviously, it's necessary to remove this. But the control, the lever for the high low range is only connected to the high low box by a cable. Whereas on earlier discoveries and Land Rovers and so on, it was a direct connection to the box. those bolts are out. Let's now attempt. <coughs> Stuck rather nicely. Bonded. Ooh, there you go. And we get the old, uh, the old brute out. Yeah, there we are. Looks like someone's had a go at it before. It's, um, it's all buckled up there. So I shall, I shall give that a little flatten with a panel beating hammer in there. And this here, this rubber cover, is what we're after. It's held on with a cable tie which runs right the way around it. So I'm going to snip this cable tie off and remove the cover. With the Jubilee clip off, just going to pull in these little tangs. I'll get it so far up, and then I'll have to remove, possibly. And I was right. All oh, exciting times. I tell you, when you see something like I've just seen, you know you were right all along. Oh, bet you can't wait. First of all, I'm going to undo this pinch bolt, take the top half of the gear stick off. Then I can move this rubber boot and I shall reveal all. With the gear stick removed, which came off very easily indeed, I now remove the rubber, which is split and stuff, but anyway, I shall put that out of the way. Remove this, what's left of the remains of this rubber boot. Oh, oh. Mm. okay. And here we go. Will you look at that? Here is the new plate. Okay, which sits down there like that. And here is the old plate. A square and a broken piece of metal which should sit in there should be sitting sort of like that in there and there you are should be right in there that is why the gear change is all floppy because these two um, springs please focus on the springs thank you these two springs should be sitting against that plate which provides resistance. I shall inspect the uh, quality of the plates and the actual uh, gear stick itself. It's very hard to look through a camera and point your finger where you want it. There we go. I shall inspect all this for wear and so on. But I anticipate that these will actually be very good. It's going to be a case of removing those four 10mm bolts and taking the old plate off. 
but yeah, look at that. Sheared off. It's actually it's actually fractured. It's quite a common occurrence. So if you have a floppy knob, a floppy gear stick, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, that's the reason why. We'll begin by taking out the four oof, ten more bolts, which is the theory. Don't want them to shear or something. Oh, well, lock tight it in there by the feel of it. That one's loose. Definitely a thread lock of some description, so I'll have to refit it with some of that. Ooh. Yeah, finding something like that broken plate is uh, one of the reasons I quite enjoy working on my own vehicles. When you've got a problem and you've deduced what it is, whether it's from reading the manual or what someone says on a forum, doing, stripping it all down, finding that very fault, and you've already ordered the bits for it and one of you, it's uh, it's brilliant. It makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. Wow, these are in there quite firmly. So you don't want them vibrating out. Otherwise oh, the plate and the springs would be loose and then you'd have well your gear changer jam up more than likely. Or you'd struggle to get it into various gears. Hmm. Perish the thought. Right. So I'll continue getting these out. You need to watch uh, spring pressure when you get when the bolts loose. So I shall just push the lever over which takes the spring pressure off and take the bolt here. Yeah there's the uh, the blue uh, thread lock. Put them out the way up there. And then I'll take this bit of broken metal out. get grease and what have you on your seats. This is why I'm not wearing my greasy old overalls in here because I'm working inside the car. And then we shall attempt to get the uh, get the springs out. Or shall I leave them there? I think I might try to leave them there if possible. Well I can't because I have to take them over the uh, thingy over the lever. I'll bend it out and up oh, over the thing. Whew. Like so. These are like giant clothes peg springs. Let's have a look at these springs, eh? Well, the mating face on them, where they rub up against the gear lever, are actually very good. It's very good. Shiny. That feels nice and it's not flat. A very, very slight lip there, but nothing makes any difference. Let's check the other one. Very good. Same with that side, very, very minute amount of polish more than anything, which also helps in handing to fit, refit them. You know from the wear which one goes where. You know from the wear which one goes where. Yeah, yeah. Wear on the inside. Okay. Get the plates out, like so. Obviously, Pointless inspecting that for wear. And we take a little look around there. Yep. A little rubber seal. I think I'll just 
take that and just put that by there for now because I'll have a little clean round here and then put this rubber seal back in. I'll get the hoover in there. Sorry, Vax. <laughs> mm, hoover is a brand name. I shall vacuum it in there. Yeah, so I've given this a clean up, I've given it a clean up in there. I've also cleaned up the face here because the plate is going to be sitting on there. We want it fitting, sitting nice and flat. I'll clean that up, I shall put that back on there. Like so. Okay. And then we get our new, our new plate. What a difference. It feels better already. Right, and I shall screw in. Oh, ooh, thank heavens for brackets. I shall screw in, just sort of loosely for now, two of these bolts, and then I'll be applying a drop of a thread lock to each. Right, so I've got my first spring in place. Something tells me this will be interesting. Let's uh, take the bolt, add a little bit of the old, just a little bit. Don't want to go too mad. Yeah, a little tube of this lasts for a very long time. It's Loctite 243, lock and seal. I have other stuff like retaining compound and whatever but that's for bearings if you use that on bolts you'll more than likely never get them out again yeah. right. got the spring arm the top spring arm on the top of the gear stick for now Before I do them up, I'll be going to have to adjust the plate by moving the gear stick and so on to get the plate in the right place. And then the next spring. This side will be incredibly difficult, of course. Oof. Very, very difficult. Hmm. I need to push it around with something. To the hole. And if I take my socket, I should be able to stand it up and screw it in. There we go. Now I just push the spring over the other side. That's the theory. There's a lot of power in those springs, I couldn't tell you. As they need to be, so that you have a firm gear change precise and so on and so forth and it's on top of the plate so I need to get that over there like so there we go push it push the spring down I'll give it a tap down there we go right it's down there like that 
do it up and I'll just loosely tighten these up and then I'll be back with you. Yes, yeah, so with all those screwed in, um, fairly loose, the, uh, we then need to adjust it. Uh, the way we do that is to move it into fourth, which is straight down the middle. So this first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So we go for fourth, that's second, second there, and then we move the lever as far over to the right as you can, like so, and then tighten the bolts without bashing your dashboard. tightened to a torque of 18 foot-pounds. Which I won't bother using the torque bench for because I know roughly what 18 foot-pounds is. Second, third, fourth, fifth, and reverse. And that's the theory. Alright, so before I begin reassembly, I'm just going to coat the inside of the spring faces and the sides of the lever with some. Molybdenum with some grease. Get that in there, like so. And I'll push as much as I can the spring just sort of out the way a little bit. Get the grease in there, like so. And that'll help any rubbing and so on and so forth. Get that in there. Nice. Like so. Okay, so I've got the rubber boot on. And one cable tie is not going to be long enough. So I've got two cable ties, join them together, and we'll do it that way. So I've now got enough play to be able to do it up a bit like that. Get it over the top. Start to pull it tight. Make sure it's in its grooves. Like so. Slightly. And there we go. Nice. Nicely done, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Bit of a squeeze with the old snips. Luckily, there's room underneath the transmission tunnel. Okay. nice and loose and free and then I'll reattach the gear stick and we did take the bolt out first like so and to line up the groove in the gear stick which is there Good tweak up. Socket's probably the best bet for that.
firm, but not done up to a high E. Right, so I've drilled out any remaining bits of rivet in the plate. And I'll begin by riveting, riveting stuff, etc., etc. Which could be a bit of a pain when I ended more, but uh, we'll have a go. Looks to have a good firm grip. There we go, so that's one, one nail. side. Slightly more tricky because the carpet's there. Still. I've faced bigger problems. There we go. And I will get and rivet all of that. All those riveted in, all the way around, nice and shiny. To do these two at the front here, which were a bit awkward, I actually bent this, this mounting for the, uh, for the centre console. I actually bent it out of the way. It's a bit dark, so you probably can't see that. Right, and without hanging about at all, and then get the next uh, piece, like so. Place it on there, like so. Okay, then we get our doodah -doo here, which is a little bit bent and buckled, but soon straighten that out with the addition of more rivets. Hindsight, really. There's that hindsight again. I didn't really have to remove this one, but in the scheme of things, it did sort of make it a little bit easier, I suppose. Right, all riveted and replace the highly advanced soundproofing stuff. And then I just reinstall the center console. Not forgetting, first of all, to reattach the, uh, oh, get in there. the cigarette lighter socket, which is easier said than done. Directional, and they go on there like so. Right. Lift up. Coffee holders always come out when you don't want them to. Second gear. Right. Remembering, of course, to refit your uh, heater pipes. Belts. Hmm. Watch the wire. 
is. Get your gear, your own handbrake thing. No, nope. remembering. Oh, we do the we do the handbrake after, don't we? What am I talking about? Ah, right. Like so. of it. There we go. It's pretty self-explanatory really. Yep. So I shall now put the screws in. One at the front. Push the console forward as far as you can. Push your cup holder back in and your ashtray. Do the two in the back of the center console. Brakes reconnected. I've actually, uh, I should have shown you first, but off an even older discovery than the one before this, I had the proper handbrake pin and clip rather than the nut and bolt that someone had substituted it for. So I've refitted the gator back into there. You have to refit the switches. Make sure they're the right way up. Like so. switches around the right way. Not those by the look of it. Ah, white's on the top. I could have sworn it was pink's on the bottom, but no. Uh, purple's on the bottom, I thought it was, but it's not. It's purple's on the bottom. Have I got this the right way up? I haven't, that'll be why then. It's the dangers of working when you've clearly had enough. So it is. White's on the bottom. Purple's on the top. Door doodah on the bottom. Uh, in the middle. See, I don't even know what I'm talking about now. Just get these little screws back in. I really am working against the light here. Really. Those screws in. And the one on the bottom. Honestly. I have got some spares off other discoveries, but um, who can be bothered? Even though the ignition's off, the old uh, windows have still got a life of their own. There we go, that's under there. Let's get that, push that back in. Right. Hey! And then we just screw the gear knobs back on. For all that, I now have a nice gear change. 
So now, you know, so that's first, I can just go straight down to second, and then if you add a second, it will just find its way for third, fourth, fifth, reverse. That's fourth, third. Whereas before it could be it could be sat there, it could be sat over there. And there you go. So I now have a nice gear change. Perfect. Which means another test drive and more coffee. <laughs>